Welcome to our Maths Teacher YouTube channel. Today, you are going to learn about the third, fourth and fifth lessons of the unit Factors and Multiples. The third lesson, finding the factors using the method of division. We learned two methods of finding factors in previous lessons. I think you can remember them. First example, find all the factors of 6 using the method of division. When a number is divided by a factor, there is no remainder. When 6 is divided by each of the numbers, 1, 2, 3 and 6, there is no remainder. Now let's divide 6 by 2. You can see that when 6 is divided by 2, it gives 3. And there is no remainder. So, 2 is a factor of 6. You know that 6 can be divided by 3 also. Then let's divide 6 by 3. It gives 2. And there is no remainder. So, 3 is a factor of 6. Let's divide 6 by 6. It gives 1 and there is no remainder. So, 6 is a factor of 6. Let's divide 6 by 1. It gives 6 and there is no remainder. Therefore, 1 is a factor of 6. Accordingly, when 6 is divided by any of its factors, 1, 2, 3 or 6, there is no remainder. Therefore, the all the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. You may understand that if a certain whole number can be divided by another whole number such that there is no remainder, then we identify the second number as a factor of the first number. In this example, the first number is 6 and the second number are the numbers that we use to divide 6. Since any whole number can be divided by 1 and the number itself with no remainder, 1 and the number itself are factors of the given number. Let's see another example. Find three factors of 12 using the method of division. Here, you are asked to write only 3 factors. Let's divide 12 by 2. It gives 6 and there is no remainder. So, 2 is a factor of 12. Let's divide 12 by 3. It gives 4 and there is no remainder. So, 3 is a factor of 12. Let's divide 12 by 6. It gives 2 and there is no remainder. So we can list out 3 factors of 12. They are 2, 3 and 6. There are more factors of 12. Can you tell me what are they? 12 can be divided without a remainder by 1, 12, 4, other than these. So they are also factors of 12. But here it is asked to write only 3 factors. That's why we divide 12 by using only 3 factors. Let's see another example. Is 7 a factor of 12? Is 7 a factor of 12? No. Give reasons. When 12 is divided by 7, you can see that the answer is 1 and it gives a remainder of 5. So, 7 is not a factor of 12. If it is a factor of 12, it should be given a 0 remainder. I think now you may understand how to find factors by using the method of division. You are given a homework. 
right answers for the exercise 11.3 in the textbook. The fourth lesson. Multiples. The simple term used for multiples is gunakara. I think you have already learned multiples in previous grade. A number which is obtained by multiplying 2 by a whole number is known as a multiple of 2. The first multiple of 2 is 2 into 1, 2. The second multiple gives 2 into 2, that is 4. The third multiple of 2 is 2 into 3, that is 6. The fourth multiple of 2 is 2 into 4, that is 8. The fifth multiple of 2, that is 2 into 5, is 10. So the first 5 multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. We can write more multiples of 2. Now let's see the first 5 multiples of 3. They are 3, 6, 9, 12 and 15. Let's see the first 4 multiples of 5. They are 5, 10, 15 and 20. You can write more multiples. Now let's write answers for some questions. First one. Write the first 5 multiples of 10. Here you are asked to write the first 5 multiples. They are 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Second question. Write 3 multiples of 2 which are greater than 10. Then you have to select the multiples of 2 greater than 10. The first multiple of 2 greater than 10 is 12. Then we need to write 2 more. So you can write 14, 16. If not, 18, 20, 22, 24. Like that. You have to write 3 multiples of 2 which are greater than 10. They are, you can write any 3 multiples of 2 greater than 10. The third question. Write 2 multiples of 4 between 10 and 20. Here, you have to include the multiples of 4 between 10 and 20. What are the multiples of 4 between 10 and 20? They are 12 and 16. You can't include 20. Why is that? Because it is given that between. So you can't include 20. Fourth one. Write two numbers which are multiples of both 2 and 5. There you have to write the multiples of both the multiples of 2 and the multiples of 5. They are 10 and 20. Let's see another example. The price of a book is 12 rupees. Find the price of 5 books. Is it a multiple of 12 and 5? First, let's find the price of 5 books. If the price of a book is 12 rupees, the price of 5 books is 12 into 5, it gives 60 rupees. In the question, it is asked that, is it a multiple of 12 and 5? Yes, it is a multiple of 12 and 5. Because 12 into 5 gives 60. I think you may understand now how to write multiples of a given number. Now you are given the homework. Write answers for the exercises 11.4 and 11.5 
in the textbook. The fifth lesson, divisibility. The simple term used for divisibility is bhajya thava. When 10 is divided by 2, it gives 5. There is no remainder. When we say 10 is divisible by 2, examining whether a number is divisible by 2. Now let's see how to identify a number is divisible by 2. Let's consider the multiples of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. We can write more. Consider the last digit of these numbers. If not, the ones place digit of these numbers. They are always 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. Again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 0. So, we can use this to identify the numbers which are divisible by 2 without a remainder. That is, if the digit in the ones place of a number is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, then that number is divisible by 2. Now, let's see how to identify the numbers which are divisible by 5 without a remainder. We write few multiples of 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now examine the ones place digit of these numbers. They are 5, 0, 5, 0, 5. You can see that the ones place digit of these numbers are always 5 or 0. So if the digit in the ones place of a number is 0 or 5, then that number is divisible by 5 without a remainder. Now let's see how to identify the numbers which are divisible by 10 without a remainder. For that, let's consider few multiples of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Examine the ones place digit of these numbers. You can see that they are always 0. Therefore, if the digit in the ones place of a number is 0, then that number is divisible by 10 without a remainder. I think you have understood well how to identify the numbers which are divisible by 2, 5 and 10 without their remainder by examining their ones place digit. Now you are given some questions. First one, select the numbers which are divisible by 2. Here you are given 7 numbers. To identify the numbers which are divisible by 2 without a remainder, we have to examine the ones place digit of these numbers. After examining them, you may understand that the numbers 24, 36, 12 and 108 are divisible by 2 without a remainder. Second question. Select the numbers which are divisible by 5. Here also you are given 7 numbers. You have to examine the ones place digit of these numbers to identify the numbers which are divisible by 5. They should be 0 or 5. The numbers 55, 105, 30 and 600 are divisible by 5 without a remainder as their last digit or the ones place digits are always 0 or 5. The third question. Select the numbers which are divisible by 10. Here you are given 6 numbers. To identify the numbers which are divisible by 10, the ones place digit should be always 0. Out of these numbers, you can see that the numbers 200 and 3100 are divisible by 10 without a remainder as their last digit 
is 0. They are divisible by 10. Now you are given the homework. Write answers for the exercise 11.6 in the textbook. I will be back in the next video lesson. Thank you.